Okay, it's late September, grouse season. Another trip to the boundary waters. This is gonna be, I'm sure, pretty uneventful, boring. I'm gonna hate it. Here we go. There's a big grouse right up there. And I can't hunt him yet. Tomorrow is uh, opening day for season. He's right there, big one. That'd feed me tonight. It's huge. The first night, I started at Kawishi Lake, and I am now at the northeast end of Malberg. This is what I did today, Kawishi Lake. And then on up. And that took about five hours to get oh shit, right here. Years ago, I cut these out just for the routes I was taking. Bad idea, because now I am just realizing I am missing this section from here. And there's about four or five lakes, I think, that string on up to here to where I need to go. And that will lead me all the way up to the top where I'm going. And then I'm going to circle back. This route I know, so I don't need a map for that. But I've never taken this route before, so... Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be impossible. I just found a nice lobster. And hopefully I'll be able to eat this tonight with uh, one of the quesadillas I see walking around on the trail up here. I don't want to shoot any now because if I do, I have nine hours that I'm going north. I'm on the Agamoc Trail and I've stayed here quite a few times before. There's a little bridge over there that passes over and runs from Snowbank to Gunflint. Yeah, this has to be one of the coolest pieces of wood that I have ever seen. Look at this twist going down it. This was polished up and stained. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've never had to do this. Usually I can put in, every time I've ever been here, I can put in back behind that corner. And then if you watch my other videos, I take this and zigzag, zigzag, zigzag all the way until I get to the forest up there and then pour it through. But this is the driest ever been by far. And you should see how many moose tracks are along here. I mean, it is crazy. A few bear prints, but a lot of moose prints, a lot. Walking through this stuff, you have to take it really light footed because every step can be pretty solid until one isn't. And I have no idea why it would be. Like so, I gotta spread my weight out. <clears throat> Shit. Ah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, even if there's grass on it, sometimes it just sinks straight down. Yeah, I mean, we're getting a lot of good sign of uh, bull activity. See this? I'm broken off. So, keep following this. And it should. Oh, some poop. How old is that? 
That looks kind of fresh. Oh yeah, that's a that's a month old. So we're on a bull trail. Absolutely sweet. Oh yeah, he's been going through here for a while. Look at that. Okay. See, so we got more uh, bull sign here. It's a big one. See, broken out there, there. So we're on the right path. Yes, yes, that's intact. Oh, let's see what the other side looks like, right? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, yes, that's nice. That's gonna push me now a little bit more. Wow, that's the brownest I've ever found one. Oh, I gotta hold that back. It's at least four days from where I'm at right now. Straight shot. Hit him. Went that way. Come on. The wolves are not too far away from me. This is a wolf path. See how there's multiple, lots of different ones. That's a pack. A moose would just be one to find, and a bear would be more in the deep woods, not in this. And a moose would break stuff like this. Now there's so many different ways. I guarantee they've been hunting grouse through here, and they're probably pissed that I am. Got to check a few feet in because when they're about to lose their antlers and they've been staying in one spot and they first walk into that bush if it's ready to fall off that's where it does and usually they don't walk too thick as stuff unless they know that that antlers a little loose all right there's one that's a good size one i hope it's in good shape A little bit chewed off on the ends, that ain't much. Oh, got a brown. It's a little brown. Oh, nice. Oh, now that's like 25 pounds added to my weights. Let's bring back. Found traces of one. Huh? That's pretty old. I just found another one. It was a little older. Oh yeah, that's a lot of water. Shit. Oh, it would have been big. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Oh, that would have been a big one.
close, right? It's night five and I'm about to leave the primitive area tomorrow. So let me show you the primitive camp that I have. Here's my landing that I picked. And I have a pretty strong fire going right now, which I am watching so that I can get a lot of coals for a little tiny pit to cook over. These are the rocks I scavenged up, taped a good flat spot. So you can't see right now too well, but there's a rock right here, a rock right there. Once this dies down, I can put my camp stove on top and just throw a little bit of fire in between. Right now, like I said, I'm just making coals. I am having pizza tonight. You see, this is an active trail, or was at one time. There's thousands of trails, so who knows what's old, what's new, unless it's rain. But here's my camp spot. I picked here the same, I think like three years I've done this. There's another bear lion on the other side. Heading towards Adams now. I already went to the furthest point that I wanted to go. That was Pitfall Lake, my primitive area, and I found some antlers and caught some nice fish and shot some grouse. None of this would have been able to be done if it wasn't for my buddy Roman and making me maps every single year. I have a little worry still going on, but so this is where I'm at, obviously, where my tent was, and the antlers. Uh, Moose paddles were up there on that hillside and on that hillside, so exactly where he said. The fishing, perfect spot, exactly where he said it was. I didn't get, get any huge ones, but I caught a lot. All right, now I gotta take this river on out, and that's where I shot the grouse yesterday. I mean, this map is spot on, spot on, but I gotta take a rock trail back because it's all dried up. And then when I get to the very end, I'm thinking it's somewhere past Adams, but there's a volcano. I've never dealt with a volcano before, shit. So, yeah, that'll be an experience. Here we go. It just rained this morning, and whenever you're walking down a slope like this, you might think if you take it slow and you lean back a little bit, that you're gonna be okay. But where it's just flat and there's no like etches in it, like this part, you will slide. See, I'm catching my grip, catching my grip. Look at that. Now this is where I'm gonna wanna walk, in these. Okay, because if not, Okay, this all happened in about 10 minutes. It was completely dry 10 minutes ago. Crazy. Oh, 
I got him. I got him. Okay, so if you've never uh, cleaned a grouse before, or a pheasant, because it's very similar, or a bird in general, I'll show you how. This is my grouse for tonight. I think every bird's head is easy enough to just pull off. Now you reach your fingers down in through where the neck is, and you feel the difference between the skin and the uh, meat, and you just pull away. So you just keep doing that. I'm sorry, I should have busted the wings off first. Okay, I've had a little, a little bit to drink. So, wings, okay, so wings are off. Twist the legs off. But like I was saying, so you reach your fingers down in between the neck and the skin, and you just pull away all the feathers. There's the fan, keep that one of them for my wife. So there we are, grouse. Soon to be a grouse idea. This is his food bag. So whatever he's been eating is inside of here. Just like the pheasant. Looks like some leaves and stuff. Let's see. Ugh, that was kind of liquidy. Yep. Got some berries and some leaves. So, the next part. What you do is take your finger and you stick it between the neck. Ah, I got a sore on that one. You put right between those two and you just rip on out. Okay? Just like that. And boom, you're gonna have the breast, and you're gonna have the legs, and then the guts, okay? If I was really hungry, I would save the heart, the kidneys, and all that good stuff, but I'm not. So, rip them all out, leave them for the bears, and the legs. Now you can just cut them. What I do is cut as far back as you can into the meat so it hits the bone, and you do the other way as well and they just twist off. All you're left with is pretty much bone. Yeah, oh, that's good. So this is one whole grouse right here. I don't know how to tell wolf tracks, but it's either a wolf or there's a dog out here somewhere that's by himself, because been no human go through here because I'm on the other side of this camping. It's not an antler. It's like a femur or something. The only trash that I find out in the middle of nowhere are balloons. And they must travel a really long ways to get out here. Looks like I'm having grouse for breakfast. Look at that. Headshot right through his head. I'm just having a uh, seasoned grouse with honey and uh, bacon. So uh, use olive oil, uh, chicken seasoning, salt, pepper, honey, grouse, and bacon. I never bring a plate. I just use the top of a bear barrel for a plate. Why not, right? An item that I would highly recommend. You just slip on in, zip on up and back, and then tighten. They're completely waterproof, and they have soles on the bottom. Day eight and camp number five or six, I think. 35, 40 mile per hour winds out of the east yesterday. East is that way. I picked this camp spot off of a trail, not even on a lake because it's a lot of young growth and I am completely covered from the wind. Just in case uh, the wind did catch in here, when you have a tarp set up, for rain during the winds 
you want to have the tarp set up straight or at a slight angle with that high wind so if i had this down at a v then that wind would catch it and 35 40 mile per hour winds it would bust the tarp so make sure in high winds you set up properly as well like i've said before have your two main anchors on trees and everything else on something that is going to have some give in the high winds because if there's no give on this the high wind's going to bust it and you will be screwed all right having pancakes for breakfast This is little Sag Lake. Everything you see is an island. Even that far land mass is an island. Oh, I believe this is Van Lake. It's a 42nd lake I've been to on this trip. This is all burned down here. Could you guess how that happened? Could you guess how it happened if I tell you that there's a camp spot right here? <laughs> Must have been east winds and the fire got out of control. But now we have all new growth coming in. That's going to be really nice to have around this uh, like 15 year old growth stuff. die since yesterday I have one run away with the arrow in him oh I am so hungry too I don't know much about grouse, but I'm learning as I go. But uh, guessing his tail feather, the size of him, he's just a young grouse. Should be really good eating though. How do I get out of here now? Oh, which way is the sun? That way.
tenth day, seventh camp setup. This morning I got two grouse, which is awesome because I am really hungry and I also want to try biscuits and gravy with them, so that'll be another one off my checklist. This is my camp setup. Last night in the middle of the night, like 2 a.m., I had something crawl inside my hammock and it was something, you know, the size of my fist. And I swatted at it a few times and got it out and then zipped up my hammock. It must have been a chipmunk or squirrel. I think I figured out what he was doing. It is the, uh, the grouse butts that I kept for my wife, all chewed out. I think he was just going after like the bones in it. I mean, he didn't mess with the grouse skull bones that I have, the skulls. But, I don't know, yeah. I hope he's not going after the meat in it, because that means that these chipmunks out here are turning into carnivores, and we all have problems then, all of us. Okay, so I'm trying to get into Adams Lake without porting. It's been quite difficult. Let me uh, show you what it's like to paddle mud. Yep, I'm making the big... I'm making it... Oh, yeah. Oh, it smells wonderful. Ate a bag of chorizo, pre-packaged bag of chorizo two days ago, or a day and a half ago. It messed me up so bad. I was puking and puking. I couldn't get out of my handlock. I, oh, but it is, it gets a little scary sometimes when you're sick in the middle of nowhere like this, obviously, because you know, have no strength to do anything. You have no one to help you out. I haven't even seen anyone in, I think, eight days since Augie. Yeah, Lake Augie. So, when you're by yourself, you gotta make sure really to have things prepped up too uh, when you get to a campsite in case things do happen. Big thing is firewood, have it all cut. Because when I was going through the shivers and it got down to I think 40 degrees at night and I had to get out of my hammock a few times to piss, oh gosh, it, was, it took everything I could. I, I could not, I did not have enough strength to cut firewood or filter water, all that stuff needs to be done when you're solo, when you first get to your camp spot. When I'm out here longer than a week, I bring a weather radio. This tunes into the closest station. And usually there's only one. Actually, there always is only one. I've never picked up two. But you, there's like seven different frequencies. You pop between and then you have to angle this at the right angle and then hold it there. So let me demonstrate that for you. But the weather, really important uh, while you're out here. If you're gonna be porting, you wanna know if it's gonna rain that day, be prepared for rain, the wind, whether or not it's even canoeable. Right now it's been 35 mile per hour winds. 
Uh, so you're kind of landlocked. Well, you are landlocked for the most part, unless you're crazy and go fishing. But anyways, here we go. Oh. Well, I usually kind of do a little rave thing like this. I pick it up. All right, next station. Or channel, I should say. Nope. Oh. There we go. Okay. She's ready to go. Usually when the wind's going this hard, they'll just let the wind take them in. So I'm just going to hopefully, hopefully he's going to take me to the bank. She will. Whatever. It's got to be 38 inches or so. Let go.
after you've cut your wood, you have split your wood, and you have splintered your wood, and you have a few options of how you want to build your fire. I prefer the log cabin over the teepee method. And then I teepee it once it starts going. As you go up, you want to get a little thicker bit of wood. Huge secret that I have. No, it's not Jack Daniels. It's a fire stoker. So, or bellow, I guess they call it. Alrighty, I can start putting on thicker wood. These are only like 99 cents, by the way. Just die turning you on. Better be worth it. Bigger than we Happy anniversary, Sid. Thank you. 
kept having this really weird dream last night and it was an extended one where I woke up and I kept on dreaming the same thing or it just like it left off where it began or where it stopped and it was me taking Chris Tucker out here the actor and every now and then in the middle of the lake he would stand up in the canoe and do that Michael Jackson hee hee kind of I can't even say hee hee or whatever and grabbing his crotch and standing up and like doing that Michael Jackson move and I was like Chris you gotta fucking you gotta sit down man you can't do that you're gonna sink us and then on like the third time he did it I got so mad and I, I grabbed like my paddle to like hit him and he just ascended <laughs> like I don't know up to heaven or something just ascended I was like what the fuck? now I'm out here in a tandem canoe yeah I, I can't paddle a tandem it's gonna take forever and I have all his extra gear and and then in the middle of the night like as I'm like around the camp and stuff in the dream I can hear him off in the forest doing that <laughs> like, oh man well